Welcome to TradingBI.com. This is John's report. It's for the 26th of September. And well, yesterday we made new lows, getting closer to that positive extreme target. No shock there. Still, MBI White leading and Magenta had popped up uh, after the slight improvement, but still well below uh, the 10 level here and uh, having a little bit of difficulty given the fact that we have uh, orange still between uh, cyan and red means continuation which in this particular case we're making new lows so that would be a continuation within that uh, setup and as we approach towards the fill of positive extremes we are getting into some pretty extreme here obviously below the red line so uh, that's a pretty strong negative in that shakeout moving uh, ever further. And now we're getting close to that uh, turnaround point where the EOC gets so overdone that uh, uh, we get a modest pop back. Uh, doesn't mean it's going to be uh, sustainable, but uh, the question will be whether or not uh, we hit that uh, full positive extreme before that takes place. Um, given what we're seeing at this particular stage, it should. Uh, even if it's just a temporary spot, but it's worth noting. Uh, we look at it from an NQ standpoint, uh, right at the uh, zero, uh, still performing a little bit better than the S&P at this particular stage, but um, readings uh, pretty close to identical uh, from everything, extreme, shakeout, uh, DOC, and uh, even the MBI readings. Uh, so where the NASDAQ had been doing a little bit better, it could uh, catch up to the S&P uh, as far as where things are going. Uh, if we scroll back to um, this first series positive extremes, those were back there. We'd already hit that from before. Uh, the next set gets all the way over to uh, right about here. Uh, so still a ways to go. Uh, we would have to move this one right up to the bottom low right there. And that would be the relative range uh, from the same breakout of the S&P. So, it just gives you a clear focus on it. Uh, interesting one from Treasuries. Now, so the bond market now getting ahead of the Fed and actually uh, raising rates uh, with an expectation and that they're going to continue to move higher. So that's, um, I would call, a bit more of an extreme move. Still consistent within the MBI readings, but a uh, uh, lot further in than I think it should probably be, but that may create uh, a knee-jerk reaction the opposite direction on any rally. So that would definitely be worth noting. But again, it hinges all on this uh, oil setup and this particular point softening just a fraction there, uh, which uh, every day you're not increasing as an improvement. But uh, with these sustained uh, move over this period of time, and if it continues even going across, uh, it's still going to bake in uh, higher prices down the road. There's no way around it. Um, and, you know, we've talked about this one, the Eurozone. Uh, it's getting me into that uh, serious crisis mode. Again, at capital flight, when you have rates in the U.S., uh, way outperforming anything in Europe, uh, what's the point of being in a Euro when you can move into a dollar and get a better return? Um, and that just puts added pressure uh, lower for the Euro. So uh, problems within the Eurozone, um, only getting exacerbated, and no surprise we expected to see that. And from a gold standpoint, that's a little unusual because with that uh, yield increase in that, of course, uh, there is that battle where it says, well, I can be in treasuries versus gold, uh, but at the end of the day, um, if things flip around at all, you would still expect to see gold uh, skyrocket. Uh, also puts a lot of pressure on crypto because again if you're getting that kind of yield from uh, u.s treasuries do you really need to be uh, in a crypto asset now that becomes a defensive play uh if you think if we start to see deterioration within the economy so again i think that these are going to be added plays that uh, have some significant advantage uh, not just yet but they're going to build towards it uh, probably fairly quickly because, again, it becomes one of those alternatives where if you think the move for uh, the dollar and things like that gets overdone, uh, it becomes one of those where uh, these are likely to pop as a result of uh, that uh, fade back um, within normal ranges. Uh, from a 50K standpoint, so things started up pretty rosy, except for we had this MBI white spike and we didn't get a move to the zero and only went to the 23. So... We then saw the magenta spike back up, 
which led to it, but then we know once you've had this spike, particularly at this level, it's just a matter of waiting for that uh, beginning crossover. It started with this bar and just continued all the way through. Um, even a significant uh, MBI weight move back up here above uh, the 10 level on that, which uh, really added to that uh, post-market activity. So that's uh, kind of one of those clear indications. Now you can see, though, from an extreme standpoint, we still haven't dipped below the red line. So um, could still be some accumulation within that. Uh, so buyers are not uh, completely out of the situation with that. When we look at it from intraday, it was uh, kind of soft in the European market. And then as soon as the cash open came around, um, things started to improve. Uh, but every time they got into that uh, positive extreme territory, from right about there, came back, filled it back in. That led to new buying that went all the way through uh, to the end of the day. But then as we started to creep into the after hour Asian market, and then by the time the uh, European session opened, things just started to uh, cascade. And so they've been fighting back uh, some of it, cleared a lot of the stops, um, some short cover taking place within that, and uh, hanging us right into the middle. And it's just pretty much a return back to the 0% uh, uh, range. So that's uh, quite a lot of activity for um, typically what you would think is a quiet. So the end of month of September, starting of its impact, and of course we're going to go into an October where uh, there's a lot of things happening and um, people are starting to take note. And I think that uh, some of those realities and the optimism that existed before uh, may be starting to back off a little bit because the, for the longest time, the culture was uh, literally that the Fed was going to be you know, forced to uh, accommodate the market. And uh, the Fed has kind of shown a pretty serious resilience to what the market uh, really would like. And they're not afraid to see uh, things move. And with the market being so advanced as far as it is, I don't think that... Uh, they're really all that concerned at this particular stage. So that's the long and the short of it for now. As always, though, trade well. We'll talk again later on SkypeChat.